Hi guys, okay, so I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible, but I've had a lot of requests for this, um, so I'm going to kind of craft with you a little bit and talk to you. So this video was very um, well requested, I will say. Um, I have not always been the perfect person or the best friend or I cut two pieces anything I have not been a good person all my life guys and I'm not saying that I'm perfect right now because nobody is perfect we all know that um, and to tell you what I'm working on is I'm working on the um, scavenger hunt 2018 so if you guys would like to come along, the page I'm on is coloring book page and it has to be colored. So I done this one, but I'm going to color a gorgeous girl to go in here also because I haven't played with these for a while. So sorry, my heater is being very loud. So I'm going to color a gorgeous girl. But the story that you guys all wanted to hear was how did I become an addict and why? and what changed my life so I did <clears throat> this video on Facebook if you guys don't have me on Facebook I'll try to link that down below um, so I pretty much told the story over there but everybody's like well I don't have Facebook there's a few people that said that so I was like well maybe I will just do it on my YouTube too so I'm going to give it to you guys too because you guys are always here for me also. So the girl that I'm going to use is Oopsie Daisy. I really like her. She's one of my favorites. And then we're going to color her with Prismacolors. So how I became an addict. Okay, we're going to start out when I was a little girl. So when I was a little girl, my father is not always been the best father anybody can be which no judgment there you know hopefully he's changed I don't talk to him much um, but hopefully he's changed we'll just say that and I do use Versafine so um, he was an addict as I was growing up and I had to watch that for many years he would walk out on my mom and it all he would always do it right at Christmas time too and it's something that I will never ever ever forget as long as I live and he knows that I've told him and so I do blame a lot on my dad because um, I had to watch that for a lot of years and I rebelled on it. I really did. But um, so I watched that for many years. And then as I was, we're going to say a teenager, I started having problems with um, my stomach real bad. And uh, so I ended up having my gallbladder taken out and... With the gallbladder surgery, I'm sure everybody knows, comes pain pills. So I was like 18 or 19 years old when that happened. Not teenager, I guess more. I guess that's teenager, 18, 19, yeah. So um, I had to have my gallbladder taken out. They started giving me pain pills. That was it right there. So I started calling the doctor all the time, telling him how much I was in pain, which I really wasn't. I was just addicted to them damn pills so I started out using pain meds okay and we was getting I was getting hooked on pain meds bad this was even before I met Jimmy guys so then I'm living with my mom um, I had the kids I obviously stopped doing everything when I had the kids I did not use or even smoke a cigarette because I was a smoker and I still am a smoker so I didn't smoke or nothing while I had my kids so 
that's one thing I can honestly say. I gave up everything when I had the kids. And while why I touched it again, I don't know. But life happens, you know. Life gets a hold of you. But this is my story. So please no judgmenting. Judging, if you're going to judge, please click out of this video and go somewhere else. Because I've had this video has been requested from people. And I don't want to be judged on this, okay? So... I had my kids and um, I'm living with my mom. Uh, a lot had happened. Me and David moved around a few times. Um, I, me and David ended up splitting up. Uh, Rayana was, she's my youngest. Rayana was just a baby. She was maybe six months old at the most she wasn't very old at all and then Dominique was about a year and a half because they're about 18 months apart <clears throat> and um look how beautifully that stamped so um we're living with my mom um actually across from where Jimmy lives actually <laughs> so I had met somebody else in between that time and I started um seeing him a little bit so then, uh, that didn't work out with him because he was bad, bad news. So I quit talking to him. He kept stalking me, this and that, but I eventually got him going, okay? And so I met Jimmy. And when I met Jimmy, let's just say that Jimmy was into some drugs that I wish I would have never tried ruined a lot of things in my life um me and jimmy has worked through that and just to let you guys know me and jimmy are clean for let's see january 4th was our year so we're clean over a year now guys so me and jimmy got into some drugs we didn't want to and cocaine was the drug of choice um I honestly, I swear, that drug has ruined my life. Um, cocaine is the reason I don't have my kids right now. Uh, so, um, I just tried, started experimenting with drugs. And like I said, I was living with my mom. And we decided to get a place together. Jimmy moved in with us. Me and Jimmy obviously was not ready to quit drugs at the time so I started pawning my kids off on my mother do I regret this yes I regret this all so very much and I would still have my kids right now if I wouldn't have went out and been stupid and done drugs but I can't change it I can only make my life better you know so, pretty much, we moved into this place, and I was pawning my kids off with my mom. Jimmy had his own place, of course. He stayed with me a lot, though. But whenever we would want to get high or whatever, we would come over to Jimmy's and get high because we didn't want to, obviously, go get high at my mother's. So, we wouldn't because the kids were there. So, we never did. That's one thing I can say throughout this whole journey, you guys. I did not get high around my kids. My mother, she, God, jeez, I put her through so much. But, you know, she looks back at it and she's like, Crystal, I'm just glad that I was around. So that way you didn't have to pawn the kids off on somebody you didn't know or do it around them or whatever, you know. So I thank her for that. She is actually helping me through my sobriety journey, too, because... You guys know, I've been a year clean. So, um, okay, we, um, are living, we decide to move over here to Jimmy's, and so I'm staying over here at Jimmy's a lot. The kids decided they didn't want to stay right yet over here, so they're staying with my mom a lot, coming over here on weekends when I'm not working, because obviously, you guys, I kept a full-time job throughout all this. I did. I did not, um... I, I worked the whole time, a full-time 40-hour job. So, um, yeah, 
it's crazy when you look back and think, wow, I worked the whole time through all this, but I did. And, uh, so me and Jimmy's kind of staying over here. The kids are coming over on weekends and staying with us. And no, you guys, we did not get high around my kids at all. Um, they never seen anything. So, um, the kids are coming over. They're staying for the weekends and stuff. And I decide to start running with... Jimmy's at work, working third shift, I think it was. I just started, decided to start running with a few um, of my our friends, and we was friends with these people together, but I decided to start running with them by myself, not with Jimmy around, okay? Nothing ever happened. I never once have cheated on Jimmy. That's not what this is getting to, guys, so don't even think that. So I'm running with these guys, and we're they're in, they have a band going on, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a rock star, you know. I'm doing cocaine, and at this point, I'm uh, I'm getting so much cocaine that I'm dealing it because we was in a rock band. I thought, you know, we was cool, so that's what we was doing. So guys, I am getting all these drugs, and these guys, of course, are loving it because. I'm giving it to them for free because they're they're a band and they're cool, you know. So, um, yeah, we start hanging out. Things are getting crazy. Jimmy's um, hanging with us, too, you know. Sometimes he comes to the shows and stuff. You know, I'm not doing this alone. Um, so he's coming to the shows, and we're just having fun, you guys. Like, this is so awesome, and... We're partying, we're playing music, and we're just all out having fun, okay? And you guys, it was a blast. I don't regret that, but I regret everything that came along with it, like the drugs and the losing the kids and everything that came with it, I regret. But I don't regret having fun with them because that was, it was fun. We never did no harm. We did drugs, of course, but you know, everybody does their things. So, um, I start hanging with the, the singer of the band, and I'm not going to mention names because I don't know if they want me to or not, so, anyways, um, so I'm hanging with him, and I'm going over to his house, and we're partying and stuff, and things are crazy, you know, we're just partying, having a good old time. And Crystal doesn't have license at this point, guys. So, I uh, had picked him up. We came over here to the house, to my house, to get something. Obviously, it was to get drugs. And um, as we're going back to his house, we get pulled over. <laughs> And I'm telling him, like, just be cool, be cool, I got this, don't say nothing, whatever, we got this. And he's like, oh, it's cool, okay, you know, he's drunk. I'm not drunk, because I don't drink, so I wasn't drinking and driving. Um, we get pulled over, okay? And they're like, um, can we search your car? And I'm like, you know... They'll never find it, you know? So, I'm like, yeah, search the damn thing. I don't care, blah, blah, blah. and I'm being rude, because I'm high. So, I let them search my car, you guys, and that was not good. I should have never, never, ever let them search my car, because, I mean, they would have probably got a search warrant, but it would have at least bought me some time, maybe? I don't know. So they found, you guys, they did not find drugs. Did not find drugs. They found a little empty container because we had already done the drugs. Um, we ended up doing them over here at my house. So I didn't, really didn't know the container was in there. It was from where we had went out one night to a, a show and forgot to take it out. <laughs> yes, we did. So, anyways, they find that, and instead of my buddy that I thought was my good friend 
helping me out and saying it was his, because he would have probably got off of it a lot easier than what I did. Because I don't know things like this, you know, and I've never been in trouble and never had anything on my record, whatever, blah, 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 you know. Things happen. So, they take me to jail. I go to jail for 72 hours. A detective comes in. He talks to me and decides that he's going to let me out. All this and that. So, I'm like, okay. You know, he's letting me out because I wouldn't talk. I wasn't saying a word, you know. I was not a snitch and I was not going to snitch. So, that's one thing everybody told me, is you don't snitch. So, I'm like, I'm not snitching, you know what I mean? Not a snitch. So, I'm like, I'm not saying a word. Sitting in there, and they finally ended up letting me go, because I wouldn't talk, and they could only hold me for 72 hours. So, um, <clears throat> I get out. Well, I think I'm cool. I'm not going to stop doing drugs. You know what I mean? I just kept at it. So, six months later, I think it was, they apparently, four months after I had gotten that trouble or whatever, they had delivered an indictment over to where me and my mom used to live, okay? We don't even live here at this point. I'm living at Jimmy's. My mom's got her own place. And um, they delivered an indictment paper to that apartment and I don't even live there guys so I me and Jimmy get pulled over one day for they said that Jimmy didn't stop at a stop sign or something I don't know lord knows it was probably something just who knows but anyways we get pulled over and they run my name I think I'm good you guys because I you know I've not in, been in trouble here they had delivered that indictment paper and I didn't get it delivered so they put a warrant out for my arrest Okay, so I have a warrant out for my arrest for um, possession of cocaine, and I am freaking out, you guys. Like, they're going to take me to jail. I'm crying. Jimmy's upset because he doesn't know what to do because there's nothing he can do because they have a warrant out for my arrest, and they're taking me regardless. So they take me to jail, okay, and... <laughs> I sat in there for 27 days, you guys, 27 days, and not a person tried to write me, not a person tried anything, so it was crazy, I was scared, of course, and I had, I'd met a couple people in there though, and they were really super sweet, and they like helped me, you know, obviously I had money, because Jimmy put money on my books, but it was just super scary, don't want to experiment that again, okay, that's what I'm saying to myself, I'm never going to do this again, okay, so I eventually get my lawyer, da 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 da, get out of jail, um, Everybody, and then my mom's scared. She's like, oh my God, you've been gone forever. So in the meantime of me being in jail for all that time, you guys, my kids were supposed to come home that summer. Well, David had went and filed temporary custody on the kids. Do I blame him? Hell no, I don't blame him. I was out of control. I was doing what I wanted to do. I was being crystal and... Drinking and or not drinking doing drugs and just doing what I wanted to do, you know, so no, I don't blame him one bit and I regret it. Hell yeah, I regret it Um, Can I change it? No, I can't change it. I can make things better though and say that I'm a better person now But so I lose my kids I get out and at this time, I, when I get out, Jimmy's not ready to quit. He's still using. And by this point, I'm so frustrated and so upset because of everything that's happened that I get high. Okay, to remind you, I was just in the courtroom, signed papers, 
saying that I was not going to use drugs, that I was not going to do this, do that, da 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 da. And what did I do? I got out of jail and I went and used drugs. The worst mistake I ever made in my life. And it was January 1st. It was the New Year's Day. Okay. So then I get this bright idea that I'm going to go to this place that sells these um, cleansers. I think these cleansers are going to work to take these drugs out of my system. I'm not going to have nothing when I go in there and drug test for them. Okay, so Brittany goes with me because obviously you guys know Brittany. She's recovered addict with me. So um, me and Brittany go up in here. Brittany's not in trouble, of course. Just Crystal. <laughs> Um, so I go in here thinking I'm going to pass this drug test, guys. I'm going to ace this thing. And I go in there and the lady's like, do you have something you need to tell me? And I'm like, nope. She's like, are you sure? And I'm like, no. She's like, well, I think you need to go in here and talk to your probation officer. And I'm like, okay. Because I'm thinking that this drug test thing's working, you guys. Yeah, well... It didn't, needless to say. I failed my drug test, okay? For cocaine, obviously. And he's like, um, if you just tell me the truth, it'll be better on you. So I'm like, okay, I'll tell him the truth and he'll let me back out. And I'll go and I'll change, okay? So he's like, you're not going to change. Da, da 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 And he starts yelling at me. He goes, stand up. Okay, this is the second time I'd been to jail, or third time I'd been to jail for this. So, um, at this point, I'm on Suboxone because I was trying to get better, and so I would went and got Suboxone to get better, and I'm taking the Suboxone and the cocaine both, which was not good. So, um, he's like, stand up, put your hands behind your back, da 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 pretty much, you're going to jail. So I'm like, alright, I'm going to jail. So I come out and I tell Brittany, I'm like, you need to call Jimmy. I'm going to jail. Um, tell Jimmy that there's nothing he can do. But when I get out, please come get me. And she's like, okay. So I go to jail. I sat in there until I could pass a drug test for him. So needless to say, I sat in jail that time. I think it was seven days they came back and got me. Because after three days, they came back, and if I could have passed the drug test then, they would have let me out then. But for some reason, I could not get that stuff out of my system, and it was crazy. So, um, this time when I got out, I definitely was changing because I was like, I can't keep doing this life. And Brittany's like, yeah, that was scary, you know, let's do it together. So I'm like, okay, because me and Brittany was getting high together, guys. Not even going to front on this because we are recovered addicts together. Um, so I uh, got some help. I went to Cedar Ridge, and it's a great program. So pretty much I got a counselor now. And I'm going to groups, and I'm doing one-on-one -on -one counseling, and I'm just talking to people now about it and telling them that, you know, I have a problem. And I sat down, and I broke down to Jimmy. Like, when I was in there that second time, he told me that that was the worst thing he'd ever had to go through was knowing that I wasn't there again. It was just so empty and... So Jimmy wasn't happy either, guys, pretty much is what I'm getting at. So me and Jimmy had decided this life has got to change. So we decide to stop. Jimmy does it cold turkey. I mean, obviously me and Jimmy are both now currently on Suboxone. But you guys, I've been on the Suboxone for a whole year. I have, um, this is my last month on Sorry, guys, that scared the crap out of me, though, as I'm telling this story that something like that happens. Oh, God. That's crazy. But, okay, um, I am currently almost off of Suboxone. I have 
January left and I'm off of Suboxone. I've been tampering myself off of it. Has it been awful? Yes. That is the worst thing to come off of, you guys, is Suboxone. So I am coming off of it. So I'm almost done with everything, you guys. And it's been a long journey for me and a long year because I obviously this happened in January I will not get off of probation until March so um, I am on probation I check in once a week this has been a blessing for me like I know a lot of people look back and they're like oh she's not going to learn this and that this has been a blessing for me it saved my life like i don't even know where my life was heading had i not got pulled over that night and all this stuff changed me because i would still be using drugs i would still be chasing the high or whatever you want to say you know i would still be doing all of that had I not got pulled over that night. But I am not. I am clean. I have been clean for a year and some odd days. Because I've been clean a year on January 4th. So, and yes, Jimmy is right along with me with being clean. Because he's been clean just as long as I have. And it's been awesome. <clears throat> so, I wanted to share this story with you guys because a lot of people have requested to hear this story it took me a lot to get the courage up to tell you guys this I'm not even gonna lie because as you heard it started when I was young my dad was an addict so that's where it started at um I want to thank all you guys for being a subscriber, and if a lot of you did not know this about me and are just now hearing this, I hope you will not judge me. I hope you will support me and share my story. Oh, sorry guys. Share my story because maybe this story will help somebody else, you know, because I know I don't have it bad, but there's some people out there that do. There's people out there, you guys, that like to use needles and stuff like that so hopefully i can change somebody else's life so if you guys would please share this video and thanks for listening i know i rambled for a while but i hope i can change somebody else's life and if anybody ever needs help reach out to me um i do have some things that i can share with you guys i will put my facebook um name down below um, as I am on Instagram, so I will try to link that down below too. So, till next time, you remember like, guys, subscribe, always give me a thumbs up because it helps. Um, if you're here to hate on me and give me a thumbs down, please just go somewhere else. I don't need the hate, I don't need the drama. Um, I'm simply just a crafter and I like to share my stories and. Um, if I can help somebody else, then I will. So until my next time, guys, or until the next time, guys, everybody just keep crafting and I will talk to you later. Bye bye.